This town hall is a presentation of Sinclair Cares. Thanks for joining us for this Sinclair Cares Town Hall. I'm Didi Gatton with the National Desk, and there is a critical issue we'd like to address today, and it's one that impacts one in two American families. It's the need for a basic necessity for babies and toddlers, diapers. Our partner on this important call for action is the National Diaper Bank Network, which reports that 5 million babies and toddlers under age 3 live in poor and low-income families. Throughout this town hall, we'll keep this QR code up on your screen. Just scan that QR code or go to SinclairCares.com to help local diaper banks provide diapers to children and families in need or reach out if your family is struggling with basic needs for your baby. Now let's begin in Maryland, where a Baltimore nonprofit is on a mission to help the city's most vulnerable. Through distributing diapers and other essentials, they've helped thousands of families in need. Maxine Stryker with our sister station in Baltimore has more on their impact. Tucked away along Union Avenue is a little warehouse packed full of love. When an item reaches our warehouse, 99% um, of the time it's back out in the community within 30 days. Executive Director of Share Baby, Amina Weiskerger, says their operation has grown tenfold since they got started in 2014. At the time, three new moms with extra baby items to donate were looking for a way to give back. They couldn't find a simple way to donate items free of charge and to make sure they were st staying in the Baltimore community. So they started Share Baby. Share Baby is a baby pantry packed with diapers, wipes, clothing, and just about any baby product you can think of. Built a pyramid. <laughs> it's all donated by the community and given to the most vulnerable in Baltimore. And we're really just there to um, help children have what they need the most in order to help families be more successful. On a monthly basis, 200,000 diapers and other essentials are given to more than 15,000 Baltimore children. Community-based organizations help distribute the items by coming to the warehouse and shopping for the families they serve. There is this need and this want to take care of your children and to make sure they're okay. And when you can't do that for your children, um, not only is it stressful for the child that doesn't have what they need, but it's an incredible amount of stress and anxiety for the mother, for the caretaker of that child. Two, four, six, they eight, rely on two, volunteers. Wrapping diapers by size in packages of 25. Like Margie. Right, and I can count to 25 really fast. <laughs> to get the job done. You can see they work really hard and they're providing assistance all over the community. Chrissy Ripley says the organization speaks to the generosity of the Baltimore community. That's the greatest gift you can do is give back. Especially to a mother in need. I think it's important that we as a community come together because there's vulnerable community members that are not given the basic necessities such as diapers as young you know as moms you know we know how difficult it is to provide for our babies and not being able to just how the basic essentials is very devastating and scary, to be honest with you. In Baltimore. And it feels good to help. Maxine Stryker. That was our Sinclair strength from our sister station in Baltimore. And now we would like to introduce our first two guests. Joining me here in studio, Joanne Goldblum, CEO and founder of the National Diaper Bank Network. And joining virtually, Dr. Megan Smith, board member of the National Diaper Bank Network. Thank you both for being with us. Joanne, starting with you, we know that this is a cause you are so passionate about. You know, your organization recently releasing this startling information here that nearly half of families report diaper need this year. Uh, in, in 2010, we understand it was one third of families. What do you think is potentially making things worse? We you know, like you said, had the study that had always said one in three, one in three American moms or American parents just described this. And this time when we learned it was one in two, well, it was really, really horrifying. It's a, it's a horrible statistic. It wasn't that surprising. You know, the fact is that 
more than 40% of American children are poor or low income. More than 40% of the births in the United States are paid for by Medicaid. There are all of these signs that show we are in a really difficult place when it comes to children and poverty. Um, and another thing I think that's really important and the reason that we might have heard that one in two number is inflation. You know, the, the cost of um, goods has gone up exponentially, mm -hmm. but wages haven't kept pace, mm -hmm. especially when we look at the fact that minimum wage remains $7.25. The federal minimum wage remains $7.25 an hour, and many states follow that. There are only one or two states in the country where working full-time at minimum wage brings you above the federal poverty level. There are so many layers of this issue, and I, I want to stick with that point. You said that there you know, are so many signs here, uh, but it's often been referred to as an invisible crisis. So we want to bring in Dr. Smith. Uh, diaper need Dr. Smith, it's been described as that invisible crisis. Many people, they may not even know their friends or their neighbors are dealing with it. In what ways does diaper need impact maternal mental health? Thank you. You, you know, um, we have a maternal mortality crisis in this country, in the U.S. Um, we're seeing um, mothers die at higher rates than other uh, comparable countries across the, the world and black women dying two to three times um, more often than white women in pregnancy. Certainly implicit bias and, and racism play a big role in that. But an important driver of maternal mortality and maternal well-being is really maternal mental health. So things like depression and anxiety. And we found in some of our work where we partnered with the National Diaper Bank Network um, that the ma maternal depression, diaper need was a large predictor of postpartum depressive symptoms. And that really has continued to come out in the diaper check work where we see high levels of depression and anxiety and stress in those fam families that are experiencing diaper need. So I think we need to begin to think about diaper need as a key piece um, as we move to address maternal mortality in our country. I mean, if you bring it back home, Joanne, it is so striking and it is heartbreaking to imagine a child without this necessity, a diaper. I mean, speak to us about how many diapers a child typically consumes, the cost, you mentioned inflation, uh, but we know this is an ongoing issue, the impact of families when they can't get those diapers. Sure, so you know, children, babies use between eight and 12 diapers a day. And that depends a lot on the age of the baby. Certainly newer babies use a lot more diapers than toddlers. Um, and the cost really varies from um, state to state and community to community. One thing we know is that the, the bigger the box you can buy, the less expensive the diaper is. So for people who don't have access to big box stores, the diapers become even more expensive. And then those who are buying at more of a corner store or, or a gas station or something like that, they're even more expensive. So depending on where you live, it really impacts the cost of the diaper. And the impact it has on the family is really many fold. One is, as Dr. Smith mentioned, maternal mental health, but the other area has to do a lot with what families can do. So most childcare centers in the United States, even those that are subsidized, require parents to provide an adequate supply of disposable diapers on a daily basis. And what we found in the um, you know, NDBN diaper check is that parents missed work of those describing diaper need, that nearly one in two, of those they missed about five days a month of work. Mm -hmm. And keeping in mind that most people in this situation are working low wage hourly jobs. This is a necessity. We've established that. Dr. Smith, share more about how this lack of a necessity potentially impacts child development as well as health. Joanne mentioned, you know, it is economic, but it's not just that. Uh, we know all of this a really big stressor. Right. Well, I think, you know, the most clear pathway that we know from, from the research is that 
you know, having a child in a soiled diaper uh, longer than you'd like as a caregiver, you know, can be associated with things like diaper rash, um, urinary tract infections. And so we do see, we have seen in some national work that there's an association between diaper need and you know ut utilization of pediatric health care and not the good kind of utilization that's you know vaccines and preventative care but um, avoidable utilization for treatment of acute conditions like diaper diaper rash so that's the more clear pathway but there's also another pathway that i think um, comes out in the ndbn diaper check which is really hearing that families who are experiencing diaper need are restricting um, you know, their social networks, they're, they're cutting back on entertainment expenses, they're having to cut back on time with friends and family. And what that means for infants and children, you know, and that's understandable, having, not having a sufficient supply of diapers, it's hard to leave the house. But what that means for infants and children is that they're less likely to be exposed to um, new situations, you know, maybe a story hour at the library, a park or a playground or a play or a music performance. Um, that they're less likely to have those interactions socially. And that can be, um, you know, that can really hinder social emotional development and really impact overall well being. So I think that's another connection um, really between diaper need and child health. That's an important one. I want to talk about what can be done moving forward. Joanne, how does the National Diaper Bank Network step in to help? I mean, what have you seen working with families, particularly, you know, when it comes to diaper need and food insecurity? Right, so the National Diaper Bank Network does a few different things. We support diaper banks across the country. We're a network. We have over 300 basic needs banks across the country. The other things that we do is we work on policy and we work on research like the NDBN diaper check. It's an important part of what we do. We also know that the only solution is for there to be federal response to this. It's the only entity that's large enough to actually address this issue. Um, you know, and when it comes to what I've seen with families, I always want to say, you know, I believe that all parents want the best for their children. And raising children is really difficult. We know that poverty is a stressor. And we know that when we're under stress, things are more difficult. So really, we're in a situation that is solvable, and we just haven't so far had the, the will from a political standpoint to make that change. So Joanne, what is the solution here? So, you know, I think there are a few different solutions, but the big picture, you know, we see this as a three-legged stool. We see philanthropy, which we've seen incredible generosity from individuals and foundations. We've seen incredible support from the corporate world. We have an amazing relationship with Huggies, who's our founding sponsor, and they're very generous. The third leg of that stool that we're missing is governmental support. And so that really is the area we have to focus on. And there has been some movement there. A lot of states have begun to, to spend some money on diapers. Um, many states have removed sales tax from diapers and also period products. Um, and there has been, a, a, there's a federal program that was implemented um, last year and again this year, and that's really exciting. But it's definitely very much just the beginning. We appreciate your insight and, and your passion, both of you, uh, on this very important issue. Joanne Goldblum and Dr. Megan Smith, thank you for joining us here and for this important call to action. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thank you. We'd like to hear now from a mother firsthand about this hardship. Jenny Perez joining us virtually from Florida. Jenny, thank you so much for sharing your family's experience. It's nice to see you. Of course, thank you so much for having me. In what ways has the Miami Diaper Bank made a difference in your life? Um, so just first and foremost, we're so, so grateful for organizations like them. Um, you know, they've really made these hard times a little easier. They've given us a little peace of mind simply just by, you know, providing diapers. You know, sometimes you gotta cut expenses and thankfully we haven't had to cut, you know, nothing like diapers thanks to the diaper bank. We got a sense of the, the numbers. We've tracked the cost of diapers, in fact, getting even more expensive. How stressful has that been for you? Super. It's like 
one of these prices is going to stop going up, you know, it, it, it puts a worry on us. And it, you know, it's something that, you know, I worry about, but thankfully, you know, because of the diaper bank, I don't have to worry about that. I know that there's resources out there and people willing to help. And, and I'm truly, truly grateful. How common, um, you know, is this problem? I, we've, we've covered that you might not know that your neighbors, your friends, families might be struggling with this hardship. Yeah, no, um, it's a funny story that um, because of the diaper bank, I was actually doing some volunteer work at the um, Reservation Army, Army Salvation, I'm sorry. And I met another young mom and she was really in need of diapers. And thankfully, you know, I had some that I could lend a hand. And, and you know, it's crazy to know that there's other mothers out there struggling to provide diapers. And, you know, because of resources we can depend on, I was able to help another mother in need. So you think about the diaper actually getting that something that you can see but there are numerous other concerns i'm sure uh and then the stress that you're dealing with as a mother right absolutely it's you know these times you know you go to the grocery store and you know what you used to spend 60 dollars now is 120 and you know it really hurts and on top of that all the bills and gas prices are going up so when you do the math everything adds up and and it's really scary times to know that when is it going to come to an end so you know it's it's scary but you know we push through and just do our best to provide the best for our children so what would you like to say to those who may be thinking about reaching out to help at a local diaper bank to help families like yours i say do it do it do it like uh the diaper bank has been so welcoming and just always had open arms and, and has just provided even more than diapers. You know, when I was at the diaper bank, she gave me clothes, she gave me products for myself. She not only asked about what my son needed, but you know, if I was okay. And it's nice to know that, you know, the mothers don't get overlooked because we do deal with a lot. So I just say that if you need the help, it's out there and to go get it because they're so ready to help you and, and they'll welcome you with open arms. So if you're thinking about it, please do it. Well, we appreciate your time, uh, your positivity, your grace in dealing with all of this. Jenny Perez, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Now let's hear how diaper banks are helping address this diaper need. Joining us now via Zoom is Shalisa Presley, Executive Director of the Diaper Bank of the Delta in Mississippi. Thank you so much for being here, Shalisa. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We start with what type of diaper need are you seeing in Mississippi right now? I mean, are you experiencing higher demand? Who does this issue impact? We are seeing a higher demand. Uh, even levels above the COVID level. Uh, we're having more families of all race and economic backgrounds coming to our diaper bank to receive help for diapers. When you think about these families that are coming in for help, what type, what types of impact is this diaper need having on them, their lives, their children, their families? Oh, it's having a great impact on them. They're having to decide whether to buy food, pay their rent or utilities because of the increased prices of everything, families are really struggling to buy diapers. And it's causing them a lot of uh, maternal stress, paternal stress, and families are really um, relieved when they can come to us and get the things that they need for their children and be able to provide for them. How does food insecurity play into this diaper need right now? As you mentioned, you know, we're seeing higher prices. A lot of people have told us they're hurting from inflation. Do you mind sharing more on, on how you're working with food pantries right now to help families in need? Oh, yes. Um, as of right now, uh, our diaper bank is experiencing about three calls a day when we're open for families who are not only looking for diapers, but also looking for food. So what we do is we try to direct them to the nearest diaper bank, I mean, nearest food pantry that's in their area, either a hot soup kitchen or a food uh, pantry. And we're also partnering with uh, food pantries in our area by providing them diapers. So it become like a one-stop shop. So when they go to get food, they can also get diapers. Our diapers are already there. So when they're in line, they just tell them what size they need and they can also get those diapers. I mean, it's great to see, uh, you know, everyone coming together because as you pointed out, it really does take a village. 
What do you think, as we move forward, what do you think needs to be done to better help families experiencing diaper need? I think we need to look at the cost. We need to look at the cost of the diapers and how um, this is a basic need. Every child who is born need a diaper. And I think we need to look at that and help families to with that need by providing those materials for them. And, and look at how we can provide some type of assistance to help families during this time of need. A child is not in a diaper forever. They're only in the child in a diaper anywhere from three to four, five years, hopefully three. Um, so if we can help families over that hump, that would help them with their long-term financial um, outcome. This is really, Shalisa, this is really a call to action. Um, you know, the, the viewers watching this, they come from different backgrounds. You know, have di the families, of course, look different. People want to know how diaper need impacts their communities, even those who do not have children, even those, you know, who, who might not be directly impacted by this need. Uh, what do you want those people to know? Uh, people to go to the lo your local store. If you don't have children or your children are older, I would like for you to just go to the store and look at, a pro at the prices of diapers. And remember that it, co it takes a family to properly diaper their baby eight to 12 diapers a day. And when you go down the aisle and you look at a pack of diapers, look at those prices. And then think about a family having to buy those and how it impact their income. And and then you think about the prices of your utilities and your uh, food and housing, and then even gas and transportation, and you factor in that. And you think about how stressful it is for a family to not to be able to provide the most basic thing that their baby needs is a diaper. It's really stressful because every parent wants to be able to provide for their children and as simple as a diaper. It's heartbreaking. Um, you know, some reports online, hearing families struggling paycheck to paycheck, of course, and then hearing uh, some describe it as living diaper to diaper. Uh, does that resonate? You know, those words are really powerful. Does that resonate with uh, the, the people that you have been helping? Yes, it does. Um, because we have, I have a family that comes in, we use, how our diaper bank work, we provide diapers once a month, but I have about one or two families that come in every two weeks because they said they just, they're just struggling and they cannot afford diapers and cannot make it to the end of the month. So we're providing bi-monthly for a couple of families. We don't do this on a regular basis, but we're noticing that these families have this extra need and they are so relieved when they can get those diapers to meet the need for to provide for their children. Have you seen donations to your diaper bank decreasing? I mean, increase? What do you, what do you think is changing? Well, our donation has decreased. Uh, we had increased during um, early COVID from 2020 to 2022. But as things, natural disasters, uh, we're from Mississippi, and as you know, we've had a lot of tornadoes that came through. So a lot of our donation has went down and went toward the tornado efforts, which is rightfully so. And then we have other things that are going on in our communities and in our nation and that world. So our donation has went down, but, and then some of our donors, they themselves are, are being affected by the economy. So they're not able to donate the way they used to. Hopefully because with, they, I mean, hopefully with this call to action though, Shalisa, hopefully we can see some change soon, which is ultimately what we all want here. Shalisa Presley with the Diaper Bank of the Delta, thank you so much for your time and, and for the ways that you're really working every single day to help families with diaper need. Thank you very much. From Mississippi to everywhere in between, diaper need is being experienced nationwide. So we'd like to bring in another executive director of a diaper bank, this one based in Pittsburgh, Kathy Battle joining us on Zoom. She's the executive director of the Western Pennsylvania Diaper Bank. And, and Kathy, what type, let's focus on your community, what type of diaper need are you seeing in Western Pennsylvania? Um, the diaper need has grown tremendously. Um, post pandemic, we're seeing um, more and more families in need. We partner with over 60 partner agencies and they tell us every day that they're starting to have lines of people 
lining up to get diapers for their babies, and it's just hard for us to keep up. Has the problem gotten better, worse? Where do we stand on that front? What could be causing it? The problem has gotten worse, and I think what's causing it is you can look at the economy, you know, how expensive gas is, how expensive food is, and um, the dollar can only be stretched so far, and families are finding it very difficult to afford diapers and other basic needs. It's a word that we hear almost every day, stress. Put into perspective the stress surrounding families needing to provide diapers, as you mentioned, in this economy. Well, you look, you, there's stress. How, um, if you can't diaper your baby as a parent, it's going to stress you out because you feel like you're not being the best parent to your child because you cannot diaper your babies. So everybody wants the best for their um, babies, but we're seeing mom's mental health is being affected. We're finding that they're stressed out. We partner with um, local community colleges, and these are caregivers trying to encourage increase or advance their education and they have children and they're saying how difficult it is because they don't have diapers for the daycare or they don't have that stash of diapers at home. So we give them diapers and they say that it just relieves the stress knowing that they're going to receive some diapers from the diaper bank to help them continue their education to get them out of this poverty level. I mean, we've heard it, it's a, a basic need, that diaper. And I imagine not having those diapers you know, obviously impacts the whole family, but can have a domino effect in other areas of families' lives. And the need, it's not just diapers. Other baby items we understand as well. Tell us what items are most in demand. You know, other baby items. So we're seeing... Um, the wipes, we're seeing the pull-ups, we're seeing baby hygiene with the lotion and the shampoo, um, the diaper cream, everything that's not covered under government assistance is a struggle for families to afford. Do you think local diaper banks, do you think that they have enough resources or what additional help could you use? I don't think they have enough resources, I, especially here in um, Western Pennsylvania in the Pittsburgh area. We are the only diaper bank. And we started a decade ago raising awareness that there was one in three families struggling to provide diapers for their babies. And we would always hear as we go out to raise awareness, well, how did this get missed? We didn't know anything about this. Can't they use their wick? Can't they use their snap to, to buy diapers? And so the, the community at large was like a stun that there was no government assistance. But since we've raised awareness that as the only diaper bank, we're seeing the community come together and try to give out diapers through food pantries, through churches, um, through schools and other ways, but still, it is not enough help. It's great to see communities getting involved, of course, but on a policy level, do you think that anything can be done to address this diaper need? And if so, what specifically would you like to see? Well, I'd like to see, um, like we have out now um, through on the national level, Diaper Need Act. And through that Diaper Need Act, Diapers are being qualified as a medical expense, uh, what they can use with their health savings act or health savings plan. I would like to see this happen for a lot of families where they can get the extra income to help them afford the diapers that's needed. And is that something that you're hearing families tell you too when they come in every single day is that they would like some more, you know, policy changes? If you, you know, in talking to these families, you're on the ground, what are they telling you? They're, they're saying that they need help. They're saying that, you know, it's, it's this diaper, but they can't afford it because diapers are costing 80 to to $100 per month. And when you don't have a stipend or anything to help you, you have to take the money that you have that, and not buy food or not pay a utility bill or not buy any the basic household necessities you need so that you can buy diapers for your baby.
Kathy Battle, thank you so much for your perspective. Uh, with the Western Pennsylvania Diaper Bank, thank you for your time and truly thank you for your efforts to help families. Thank you so much and thank you for just sharing our story that, you know, this is a silent crisis and if we come together as a community, this is something that we can all do a little bit about. Still ahead, we'll introduce you to a single father of four and share more on how a diaper bank in Texas gave him the gift of hope. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Infants require up to 12 diapers a day, which can cost more than $100 a month per child. But no federal government program, including SNAP and WIC, provides funding for diapers. If you're able to help families in need, scan this QR code or go to SinclairCares.com to help provide diapers to a local diaper bank. Please also reach out if your family is struggling with basic needs for your baby. In San Antonio, the Texas Diaper Bank has been around since 1997, offering major help to some of the smallest Texans, free diapers for families in need, and the whole idea here is both obvious and generous. It may make you wonder what families did before the diaper bank was ever created. David Chancellor with our sister station in San Antonio has more on this gift of hope. The numbers are difficult to hear, tougher to endure. Pulling from savings to buy stuff was a little painful. Nearly one out of two families in America struggle to make sure that a child is wearing a clean diaper. You heard that right, one out of two. You have someone who is working and comes in and, and needs just a little bit of assistance, and then you have those that have really, really limited resources, and they come in with their baby, and you can tell that their baby has not been changed. And they're here because they need you to provide that one diaper that's gonna make that difference in keeping their baby healthy. This is what I would expect to see. It's a this problem Jacob Relsick knows well. He's a single father of four children under the age of seven who admits paying for the diapers is about as tough as asking for help. I thought initially that, okay, diaper bank, charity, low grade, cheap junk perhaps, but once we tried it, it was like, uh, okay, first of all, the cost and the quality was good. And when you talk about diapers and you have to make that choice between food and diapers, sometimes diapers are not going to win. They're not going to be the priority. That's where the Texas Diaper Bank helps. Their warehouse is stacked, literally, with more than a million diapers, which have been collected, packaged, and then distributed to families in 18 different Texas counties. Google the numbers the Texas Diaper Bank did last year, and you'll be amazed. Over 2 million diapers raised and nearly 215,000 families helped. But here's what the numbers don't measure. Hope. They're a godsend, and they've blessed this family for four, over four years now, I think. During COVID, you and I both, all of us, couldn't find toilet paper, paper towels, things like that. They had diapers. Families can receive 25 diapers a week, 300 every three months. We never run out. The diaper bank even delivers, which is a bonus because the last thing that a parent of a newborn has enough of is time. Yeah, it's a huge relief of time, gas, you know, driving, picking them up. For us, it's very gratifying when we are able to put a package of diapers in the hands of a mom, uh, of a single dad, in the hands of a grandparent who's raising a grandchild. They come up to you and they even want to give you a hug. We know we're doing something right. David Chancellor reporting from San Antonio. Another guest joining us now, Democratic Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro from Capitol Hill. Congresswoman, it is great to have you here with us. We know that you have fought long and hard to affect change. Share with us why this particular issue, diaper need, why is it so important to you? Uh, well, it's, it's an economic issue. It really is. You, you, you know, people today live paycheck to paycheck. That's just not a, a sound bite. Um, uh, folks have not seen a, a pay increase in years. Uh, and, and what have they seen, in fact, is the uh, skyrocketing cost for essential goods, whether it's food, utility costs, housing costs, uh, goods for their kids, school supplies, uh, clothes. And in this case, you know, uh, uh, diapers. Uh, in 2022, the cost of diapers for families each month was between $70 and $80. Uh, so you're looking at close to $900 a year. Uh, for you know, for 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 diapers. So, and as, uh, actually, 
Um, I have to say that I was introduced to this issue uh, by a, a wonderful and dear friend, Joanne Goldblum mm -hmm. of the National Diaper uh, uh, Network and how her advocacy got right. me into this fight uh, because she knows firsthand uh, how families are struggling. Um, but critically, she knows how receiving help from the community can help them for their kids and their families to be able to thrive. Right. And that's what we need to be doing is looking at how we provide that financial stability, that economic security for families today and not put them or their kids at risk because we know they're not healthy. Yeah, we ha we talked to her and, you know, we, we heard those stories firsthand. We also want to know, tell us about the Diaper Bank pilot program that you helped start with the Department of Health and Human Services. Mm -hmm. Well, this is, you know, what what we what we've done is we launched a diaper distribution demonstration and research pilot, and that is to uh, uh, help meet a family's diaper needs, alleviate the cost burden of diapers and improve the economic security of working families. So it's $16 million has been provided to serve 12 states and, and, two, and two tribes. Um, uh, the families will receive diapers, uh, uh, which alone can be about 8% of a person's total income, but they're gonna get critical support services, job training, educational support, Head Start, housing services, and more. This is for our kids. Uh, and we need to fight to ensure that families do not have to sacrifice diapers or any other need of their children to be able to make ends meet. In looking at that fight, that continued fight, Representative, let's look at what you think has worked. What, what doesn't work to help with this issue? What do you think needs to happen at a state and federal level, legislation perhaps? And how do we ensure parents can afford diapers? Sure, a, a, a very, very good question. First, understand that when Joanne and I uh, we're talking about this not that long ago. Uh, we we were told by folks. I listened to people say, "Well, if they can't afford diapers, they shouldn't have children," or that we were engaged in the nanny state. We took all kinds of criticism for uh, for getting engaged and involved in this. And now there is a national uh, a network because of understanding the need. So in order to be able to move forward, what we need to do is to say, uh, a, a government that does work for working families and the vulnerable. Um, uh, and uh, uh, one of the, the ways in which I think we can move is to uh, d deal with the child tax credit, which got introduced through the American Rescue Plan, um, and which provides uh, funding uh, to, to families with kids under six at $3,600 a year, kids six to 17, uh, you know, three thousand dollars a year. One of, the, as I said, one of the most successful programs we have seen lifted uh, uh, almost fifty percent of kids out of poverty, lowered the hunger rate in the United States by uh, by a uh, twenty six percent. So I believe the child tax credit is the most effective tool that we have to fight against rising costs and ensuring that people can provide the essential goods for themselves and for their families. We thank you for being a leader in this fight, Representative Rosa Deloro. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks very much. Take care. Turning now to a policy expert to further this conversation, Miriam Calderon is the chief policy officer for Zero to Three, a nonprofit organization based in Washington, D.C. Miriam, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Are there currently any diaper policies in the U.S.? Sure. Um, you know, this is an area where we really see it a disconnect between the need and, and policy. So we know that there are families in every state and community across the nation that really face diaper need. Um, according to the National Diaper Bank Net Network, um, they estimate that nearly half of families with young children uh, report struggling with diaper need, yet we have very few programs that actually help families cover the cost of diapers. Um, to give you an example, um, we have the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, the TANF program, a federal program, does allow for the purchase of diapers. So one of, of uh, very few programs um, that includes the cost of diapers and helps families purchase um, diapers. Um, but our data show from like our State of Babies yearbook that very few families with infants and toddlers are even eligible or are served in that program. So 
what we see is actually, you know, an, an area where we need a lot more attention at the federal um, and state level to really be able to help families, especially low income families, um, be able to cover the cost of diapers. Um, it's an area where we know families will have to make really hard trade offs um, if they don't get more um, help and support, um, sometimes choosing between diapers and food, um, not being able to afford diapers creates stress for families. Um, it can create disruptions in childcare. So we want to see more action at the federal and state level. And I'm glad that you brought that up, Miriam, because we've heard from people uh, at diaper banks, you know, at various states. But what is happening at the federal as well as the state level with regards to any legislation focused on addressing diaper need in this country? Yeah, well, fortunately, um, in the last Congress um, and in this Congress, uh, at the federal level, we've seen more attention um, to uh, this need um, around um, being able to help families um, with, um, you know, afford the cost of diapers. Uh, in the last Congress, um, a bill was introduced in the Senate, um, the Diaper Act, um, and this would have um, provided um, flexibility um, with flexible spending accounts accounts and health savings accounts um, to include the purchase of uh, disposable infant diapers. Um, uh, we haven't seen this bill reintroduced in this Congress yet, but that is something uh, that we're working towards. Um, in um, the House of Representatives, we um, this Congress um, the bill, uh, another a bill has been reintroduced, the Improving Diaper Affordability Act, um, and that will um, help again um, with being able to make the purchase of diapers tax-free and reimbursable, as well through health um, savings accounts, and again helping more families um, be able to purchase diapers. Uh, we were also really excited to see um, the Biden Harris administration taking action um, on this issue um, in September of last year, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Administration for Children and Families um, announced a new uh, pilot program where they were going to be um, working, uh, providing grants to uh, a select group of communities to be able to assist with diaper um, distribution. Um, and this, they were, you know, calling a demonstration and research pilot. Um, and this is the first ever sort of federally funded diaper distribution um, effort really targeted targeting uh, families with low income. Um, so we're excited about that effort and hoping to see that grow. Um, and then, you know, we continue to see um, in states and communities, uh, diaper banks, um, growing and particularly being housed within family resource centers um, and, you know, those uh, reaching and being an important really uh, stopgap for families. Miriam, we have heard from diaper banks, uh, diaper banks telling us that that the diaper need, that this problem has, has gotten worse. So, you know, on the policy level, you know, anything, any challenges to seeing actual action uh, federally or on the state level? Well, you know, I think at this, what we're, one of the positives I should say is that um, the bills the, and the legislation that I mentioned um, has, uh, you know, bipartisan support. And I think, uh, you know, we've seen um, terrific champions, um, Representative um, Rosa DeLauro from Connecticut, Representative Barbara Lee um, um, from California and the House of Representatives have long advocated for federal solutions to this issue. Um, but, you know, the bill I mentioned in the Senate um, has also Republican members um, and co-sponsors on those bills. Um, you know, uh, uh, Senator Ernst from Iowa um, has been a leader, and that's really important um, at a time where um, there are often not many issues um, that Congress um, can agree on from both sides of the aisle, um, Republicans and Democrats working together. I think this is an issue um, where, where we can see that bipartisanship. Earlier, we heard from Representative uh, DeLauro, and, and to that point, you know, lawmakers truly passionate about this issue. Before we let you go, though, what can viewers watching this, what can they do to help with policy changes? Yes, it's critical that um, po our policymakers hear from families uh, and those that are most impacted by these by these issues, um, and that you know 
tell that that families tell their stories. Um, there is, uh, I think, those are the kinds of um, you know we we're we're seeing more and more that those uh, real connections, those real stories, um, uh, is is really what is is breaking through, and I think really what uh, goes a long way in making a difference. Um, so, uh, just making those connections, whether you feel comfortable doing that on your own um, through organizations that champion the, these issues, um, like um, the National Diaper Bank Association or Organization Zero to Three. Um, it's just really critical um, that our members of Congress and our elected leaders um, hear uh, about um, you know, the need, um, the impact that this has in the absence of action, and that there are solutions out there. Um, and that, you know, and we and that they they hear from their their constituents and families most impacted that that they want to see their support um, on these bills um, and that we expect them, you know, to support these bills and, and to move them through Congress. So, um, you know, visit um, our website, thinkbabies.org. We have um, resources and information. And again, there are many organizations doing terrific work to move these bills forward. So connect with those um, and connect with your members, members of Congress. Um, and I think if we all do this together, you know, we can see we can see a real progress. There are not many issues where right. we can say that, but this is one that's of them. A good, that's a good point. I mean, it doesn't matter which side yeah. of the aisle that you're on. I mean, this is an urgent need. We've heard the stories that impacts communities nationwide. Miriam Cotteron with Zero to Three, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And coming up, we'll hear from a retired man in Salt Lake City, Utah, who started a diaper bank in his garage and now donates more than one million diapers a year to families in need. Stay with us. Because you are seeing the impact the Share Baby has is doing in a local uh, community, but why not get big, go bigger? Obviously, the National Diaper Bank is doing that. Running this uh, organization and providing diapers and baby needs to our community. So I would love to see it just continue to grow. Welcome back. According to the Center for Economic and Policy Research, the poorest 20% of Americans who need to buy diapers spend nearly 14% of their after-tax income just on diapers. Sinclair Cares and the National Diaper Bank Network are helping fill the gap, and together they're getting a basic necessity, clean, dry diapers to families in every state across the U.S. If you are able to help, just scan that QR code on your screen or go to SinclairCares.com to help provide diapers to a local diaper bank. Amanda Gilbert with our sister station in Salt Lake City spoke to the Utah Diaper Bank, hearing why this is especially important right now. The Utah Diaper Drive says it costs U.S. families about $80 to $100 a month to buy diapers. It's a need that state and federal government doesn't really help with. That's why this is so important. When Victor Villavis retired... I actually was going to do a hot dog cart. He wanted to do something different. A local crisis nursery came on TV, but their clients didn't have diapers and they didn't have diapers. That's when he decided to start a nonprofit out of his garage. Why diapers? Why focus on diapers? So government agencies help with food, they help with med medicine, they help with, uh, you know, daycare, they help with clothing, job interviews, all those kinds of things. But diapers are a gap. His nonprofit grew from donating 11,000 diapers a year to 1.3 million. We started out in my house, 11,000 diapers. And Vic says more recently, KUTV helped with this success. People like KUTV may made the community aware of the problem and once the community is aware of the problem, once they find out no government service is actually supplying diapers for low-income families, they want to help. Over the past two years, the KUTV Diaper Drive brought money and around 300,000 diapers to the nonprofit. They're distributed all over the Wasatch Front and more. I can't tell you how to thank them much for, enough for what they've done. Wendy Osborne runs a food pantry in Utah called Tabitha's Way. The need is is tremendous right now. She says clean diapers are essential. Babies don't have the immune systems that we do. But with inflation, the 
buying power of families' budgets have diminished. One mom at the food pantry recently lost her spouse to suicide. She was pregnant. She had small children at home. Having diapers there, having food there was a tremendous relief for her. The gratitude. Tears in their eyes. They're they're crying. Osborne sees it firsthand. In Utah, I think our population, we have both larger families and of course um, everywhere has, you know, single parents. Okay. While other needs like food and medicine tend to get noticed first, it's important not to forget this. It's preserving the health of a child is what that's doing and that's huge. In Salt Lake City, Utah, Amanda Gilbert. And now we'll hear from the executive director of a diaper bank in Buffalo, New York. Razia Hill is the executive director and founder of Every Bottom Covered. Razia, it is so great to have you here with us. What type of need are you seeing right now at your diaper bank? Uh, we are in Buffalo, and after 514, where a tragedy occurred at the Tops Market, um, we definitely see the need even elevated. Our community is primarily urban and very much so low income. We have 40% of people living in poverty in Western New York. So we understand that there is a significant need. It is only enhanced due to our trauma. Um, and also, we are still reeling from COVID. So we are. Um, still trying to pick up the pieces of that, compile with this tragedy, and then the rebuild after that. And so it's so in important to get this message out there to all those watching and listening. What is your message to them who are considering ways that they can best help? That diaper need affects the entire community. It does not just affect the family that is being served by our, our organizations. Uh, we need to remember that we are all interconnected and families are missing work, children are missing daycare opportunities. We are missing ways to stimulate our economy because families are unable to use those resources uh, for a lack of basic needs being covered. Rosie, what do you think is one of the challenges to solving this issue? From your experience, I mean, on the ground, talking to these families every single day. Uh, organizations like ours and diaper banks across the nation are definitely doing our part, but it needs to be a governmental response and a, a much more push towards funding for diaper banks. Just as we fund food and understand food insecurity, we should understand that there are other basic needs that are not being met alongside that. We should des definitely continue to champion that both on a state side, uh, on a state level, and then definitely on a federal level because there needs to be support from our government to ensure that families have a leg up in that area. And then, you know, as we've discussed, it's not just, you know, an economic issue, the, the impacts, uh, you know, to maternal health uh, on the children themselves. Is that something that you're seeing? Absolutely. Uh, mothers are dealing with not only postpartum, but also just uh, depression and anxiety of not being able to supply adequate amount of diapers for their children. I think that that is something that no family should have to experience. We're also having children go to the emergency room for things that are preventable, like yeast infections and diaper rash and urinary tract infections, because they don't have a provision of clean supplies that will last enough for their family. And again, we're knowing that children can't go to daycare without extra diapers. Families then will keep their children at home and then they're missing work. So it's just um, a domino effect in the community and health disparities, uh, especially ones that we can treat, we need to examine and we need to understand why it is so difficult to get in front of this. And I'm glad that you brought that up because it is something, I mean, missing work, it's something that you don't think about, uh, but it is an issue, a huge issue nonetheless. Razia Hill, thank you so much for all that you are doing and for so many families and for joining us. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for having me. We'd like to hear from a New York mother about how that diaper bank, Every Bottom Covered, has made a real difference in her life. Jasmine Conyers joining us virtually. Jasmine, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. We understand you have two young daughters. Share with us how Every Bottom Covered has helped your family. Uh, Every Bottom Covered has been a blessing to my family. Um, when I was about eight, almost nine months pregnant with my youngest daughter. I have a three-year-old and I have a 10-month-old. Um, I was unemployed at the time, um, separated from my husband, um, no income. Um, and 
I was at the point of, I guess they call it like um, nesting. We're trying to get ready for it to bring a baby home. And, you know, it hit me all at once that I didn't have anything to for my for my child at that time. And I started to look into different resources and I found out that Every Bottom Covered existed and reached out, found out that I qualified and Rosiah Hill was a blessing from just day one. Um, you know, I told her what was going on and she just started having all different type of things delivered to my home. Um, and, you know, being emotional and eight, almost nine months pregnant, you know, just brought me to tears because it was the very first thing that I had for my child at the time. Um, you know, she went over above and beyond, like out of her own pocket at that time when she, you know, found out my story. Um, you know, she said that, you know, God just put it on her heart to be a blessing and it was, you know, diapers, wipes, mm -hmm. bottles, um, a couple outfits, um, you know, and those were the very, that was the very first thing that I had for my child at the time. Right. You know, we, we heard from her earlier sharing, you know, in just incredible stories of families and what they had to deal with every single day. What led up to you ultimately deciding to reach out for help? Because we know, understandably so, it's not always easy to ask for help, but was it one event in particular for you? Was it a series event of events that led to that? Um, I mean, it just was out of the, the, the fact that I was in need, you know, I didn't have any, I did not know where I was going to get diapers from. I didn't even know things like that existed. Um, but once I found out that it existed, you know, I was grateful that something like that even existed because I couldn't afford to buy diapers. I couldn't afford to buy any of those things. And we understand that you are now part of an effort to help other families. Do you have any message to people who may considering helping support our call to action to provide diapers to local diaper banks really across the country? Oh, definitely. If you are in a position where you can help um, organizations like Every Bottom Cover and the, the diaper banks in different states and throughout the United States, Please, 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 you know, there are days where we we um, have to have some diapers delivered in order to meet the need for that day. You know, we have families that come in, uh, we distribute from 12 to 4, you know, as a result of our friendship, I was also in a position, um, Rosiah was in a position where she needed some assistance uh, with employment. So she was offered, she was able to offer me a part-time position. So now I'm able to work. And, and, you know, help distribute diapers and help, you know, put applications in and let the families know that they are approved for, for the services. And just, you know, sometimes hearing the, you know, they're so grateful sometimes. They're like, thank you, thank you, thank you. But, you know, people that are in a position to be able to donate diapers, you know, you just, you never know how much that means to families just to receive, you know, and 50 diapers don't last you 30 days, but it's more than nothing, you know. I know people can really make a life-saving difference and you're proof of that and we appreciate you sharing your personal journey but of course uh, for your effort to to help make a difference in the lives of other families. Jasmine Conyers, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. A reminder, scan this QR code to help a local diaper bank provide diapers to children and families in need. And if your family is struggling with basic needs for your baby, go to SinclairCares.com. That's going to do it for us for now. From all of us at Sinclair Cares, we sincerely appreciate you watching and for helping address this diaper need in America. From Washington, I'm Didi Gatton.